so we can get started. Um, okay, well, thank you, Amy, for inviting me um, once again to give just a brief welcome. Um, and I'm I'm really excited that we have Jeanette Terrazas here to speak with us this evening. And thank you so much to Amy Sanchez Arteaga for organizing this incredible series for the School of Art and Design. I'm Annie Buckley. I'm the director and a professor here in, in the School of Art and Design. And um, this series, Amplify Practicing Solidarity, is part of our newly launched um, diversity and inclusion initiative, which is a really comprehensive and quite involved with multiple faculty and students and staff um, opportunity for us to just look at what we're doing in the school and what are ways to um, evolve. And so with that being said, I also want to thank um, Michelle Schlecht and the Michelle Schlecht Visiting Artist Fund for supporting the diversity inclusion initiative and this series Amplify. And with that, we'll begin. Um, I'll pass it back to Amy, but thank you so much for being here. I look forward to the talk and welcome to our students and welcome to whatever community members have joined us this evening as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie. Um, so as we, um, or before we begin today, um, I just wanted to begin um, by um, acknowledging in this lecture um, and um, sharing gratitude uh, with the Kumeyaay people for their continued stewardship of the land that our university is built upon. And also acknowledge that um, Jeanette Terrazas will be speaking to us from the traditional homeland of the Raramuri and the Mezcalera uh, Pacha people. Peoples. Um, so we honor and we thank these peoples um, and we are also so grateful um, to uh, Michelle Schlecht again for um, her support of this series and for bringing um, great artists for our students and community um, to participate um, with and, and learn from uh, this semester. So um, I want to now introduce today's speaker, Janet Terrazas, um, who's an artist organizer and cultural worker based in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. Her work mobilizes the production processes, economies, and mutabilities that arise from textile and garment production to address issues of gendered violence, labor histories, indigenous rights, and transnational solidarity. This work straddles the lines between collectivized feminist community building efforts, nonprofit cultural stewardship, experimentation with botany and natural, di natural dyeing um, processes, and efforts to document and trace histories of ecological violence and femicide. As one of the founders of Nian Moore, a social innovation project that merges um, political activism, fashion, and art, she has worked to provide employment for women in her community that compensates their labor fairly, provides them with resources for growth and personal support, and offers a model for how others working in fashion, art, design, and activism might intervene into cycles of violence at the scale of their own communities. Teresa's work makes itself a container for innovative strategies of solidarity and proximity. She offers us a feminist politics of care that acknowledges reciprocity with nature and each other as fundamental acts of advocacy and forms of enacting our own power. Please everybody join me in welcoming Jeanette Terrazas. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone, uh, to, to especially to Amy, to Annie, to the, to the um, San Diego State University, and thank you for everyone to join us today. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to share with you some part of my experience in this um, um, process, uh, process of creation and, and art. And I would like to, to start this uh, conversation with a quote, of, more than a quote with a reflection that I, I have been doing in the last weeks. And it's about, it is art an agent of change. So reflecting on a quote from Sherman Mao in the revolutionary culture, where he argues that art prepares the, fi the field before the revolution arrives in which he considers art as one of the most important fronts of struggle. He invited me to question whether art object can transform our reality and I believe that it can if it lacks political 
essence. So I think that art taking into action the power of symbolisms, the voices it represents, the access to these symbolisms, and the important work of documenting history and its various contexts within the struggle is what converts art and transforms to art in a medium that prepares us in formals and that it's the reason why it becomes so important. So not, art, not, not all art is an agent of change. It's a revolution that transforms art and make it useful. So I, I would like to, to do my best, I, I would like to do my best in English. Um, I'm living in Ciudad Juarez and I was born here. Um, now I'm going to share with you my screen because I prepare a presentation. So please, uh, I would like to, to know if everyone can see the screen. Someone can conf confirm me, <laughs> I wish. Yes, Jeanette, we can okay, see. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, just give me a second. Why I cannot change it. <clears throat> just give me a second. I don't know what has happened with my mouse. I think I'm having problems. Why? I think it's stuck my screen, but I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, I cannot. Do you, are you able to maybe close the program and start it again? I don't know if that will help. And you're I'm okay, so don't sorry. worry. Well, wait, no, no, you're fine. I don't get yeah, I nervous. Yeah, I think I froze <laughs> my, my yeah. screen. I don't know why, because my mouse is not <laughs> functioning. Oh my God. Yeah, I Can think you... I'm going to restart. I'm so sorry to everyone. Okay, just give me like, if everyone can connect in maybe a few minutes, like three minutes, I, I can fix it. Well, I think we, yeah, we can stay on and then we, we can wait for, um, for Jeanette to rejoin. Amy, I love how you have asked your guest artists in this class to share an assignment. Um, along with their talk. I think it's such an innovative strategy for the course and such a benefit for the students. Would you be able, to, would you wanna share what the one is for this talk or do you like to do that at the end? I don't know. Yeah, so the we, we spoke about it on Tuesday and what Jeanette has asked the students to do um, is think about nature um, and write a poem um, or write some, share some piece of writing um, and for those who are interested, she's actually going to share that as part of a kind of social media campaign that she has in solidarity with um, some of the work that she's doing around ecologies um, in, in Juarez. So, oh, I think, so she is back. Let me just, um, I'm making her a co-host. Okay. Yeah, you can hear me? Yes. Okay, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> I was very nervous. <laughs> I wish this time everything works better. <laughs> okay. Okay, can you see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay, so just let me check. Okay, I think it's perfect now. Okay, so I was born in Ciudad Juarez and I would like to, to share with you a little part of the story of Ciudad Juarez. Ciudad Juarez, uh, before the 80s, the 1980s, uh, it was a, a land that the pri pri primal activity, it was agriculture. So here in Juarez, the cotton, it was one of the uh, primal activities. 
uh, but in 1983, around those dates, um, the government implement the industrialization plant. And this is very related and linked with the, um, with the um, TLC, La Tratado de Libre Comercio, that um, the plan it was to install many factories in the city in order to promote like uh, w jobs and and grow and growing uh, economy for the city and for in to Mexico, right? But the the um, most of the of the um, companies that comes to install here in Ciudad Juarez are foreign foreigners, son extranjeros. So uh, with this industrialization plan, many women from many parts of Mexico came to Ciudad Juarez to work. And they have, these women have um, like particular con uh, conditions. Many of them are indigenous from different parts of Mexico. They are um, living in vulnerable conditions in their, own, in, in, their, in their towns. Like they are people that are very poor uh, in living in poor context. And many of them are also single mothers. So when this happened, the boom of industrialization in Ciudad Juarez, the maquiladoras starts to contract like many women. So in, the, in, in this, uh, we can see that Ciudad Juarez has a very close um, history with women, labor and exploitation by the maquiladoras. And in the land, and, and and if you if you know a little about the history of Ciudad Juarez in in the 90s, in 1993, it starts to happen a phenomenon that it's the femicide. Femicide is the murder of a woman just for being a woman. So, um, for for many uh, time um, when I when I grow up here when I was young, I see in the news. Um, every day that this femicide happen every day to, to, to young people, to young women. And it was something that um, impacts myself since I was 12 years old, because it was something that changed the history of the place I lived. So uh, for many time, I was like trying to understand why this happened to the women in Ciudad Juarez. And I um, reflect about these conditions that the industrialization creates around the city, because it was just not that the women, uh, it was uh, working in the maquiladoras. It's also a problem that it has been uh, related with the public space because when maquiladoras come to Ciudad Juarez, came to Ciudad Juarez, uh, they install in many parts of the city. So the city, it was not uh, created to be able to, uh, to be, uh, how, could I, how could I say? Um, it was not friendly for people to live here. It was created more or focused more the planeation of the city for the maquiladoras. So the public space is very um, deterior deteriorado, like deteriorate. I don't know how to say it, like deteriorado. Deteriorated. Deteriorated. Uh huh. So people, women, men, uh, young persons, uh, children cannot transit um, in a good conditions or security conditions in Ciudad Juarez. So many of the women that start disappearing in the nineties that where um, they was uh, workers from the maquiladora. And it was because maquiladora has very bad conditions for women, but also the conditions of the public space. So uh, since 1993 to 2020, we have been living in the same, in, in the same uh, conditions. And the maquiladoras, I think it's one of the, um, um, yeah, uh, uh, how could I say, factors, like factor that 
perpetuate this violence against women. Um, but also we have a culture that is root, the misogynist culture is very rooted in our society. So in my personal experience, another thing that um, marked my life or yeah, like changed my life, it was my first boyfriend. So from this first boyfriend, I live many kinds of violence. I live sexual abuse, I live uh, physical abuse, psychological abuse. And I think in, in that time, I didn't know and, and I didn't connect the, the, um, the violence as a structure. So these two things um, are the, uh, could be, I, I don't know how to say, but um, I think it's the reason why I am a feminist and I am an activist and artist. And it's, it's the reason why, why I am doing what I am doing. Um, but I think one of the, the, the reasons also is to born in Ciudad Juarez that changed my life. So um, I would like to show you um, a video that I made with a friend in 2016. So you can know more about the context of the city and, and also about how solidarity it looks in a city like, like, like mine. I know, please. Okay, let me see. I don't know why it's again, it's stuck. <clears throat> I don't know if I, I have to go out again. Give me a second. So um, while, while Jeanette um, problem solves that, I just wanted to mention that the industrialization process that she was referring to. Um, so for students in class, when we talked about NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, um, that was the, the acronym that she gave us was in Spanish. So I just wanted to make sure that that was the, um, everybody understood that that was the same process that we spoke about in class on, on Tuesday. Um, and the fact that then a lot of the urban planning in the city um, is structured according to that plan, which is a, a kind of plan for factories and um, for um, kind of industrial um, structures and for commerce more than it is um, for people. And that is the kind of um, thing that I think then affects really um, public space and, and the way that people are able to inhabit public space safely. Um, so she's back. Okay, can you listen? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to share, I was thinking, to, I, I'm not going to share like the play, the big play of the, because maybe it's that thing that cannot keep me the movement to to go to one of the um, of the frames to the other one. So I would like I'm going to share my screen like this, and maybe that will be better. Can you see right? I'm I'm scared that I play uh, press the play and then happen the same again. So I don't know if. Uh, Everyone can. Yeah, this works. I think this works mm -hmm. just fine. Yeah, yeah, that's a good solution. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because I'm scared that if I press the play, I cannot go forward. Okay. Oh, sorry. a los servicios. Estas reformas estructurales han empobrecido nuestra vida y cada vez tenemos que salir a trabajar más horas para poder tener el sustento del día. Todas las mujeres que somos trabajadoras de Ciudad Juárez, también es violencia tener una jornada de doble o triple para conseguir el sustento. Aquí se les siguen desapareciendo las jovencitas y el gobierno no hace lo necesario para que las niñas aparezcan. Me parece algo terrible que los 
los padres y las madres tengan que andar en el arroyo de Navajo buscando huesos de sus hijos. Okay, so this was um, a short documentary that I made with uh, a good friend uh, in 2016, and I will, uh, I really would like to to share with you some of the stories that are um, happening in my city and how we, as an artist and activist, we have this responsibility to go and take the streets. So um, I'm going to start sharing with you some of the, the of my first work this um is a public play public space installation that is uh, it was called venus uh in the in the networks of the trap of the human trafficking and uh, venus en las redes del tráfico it was made in 2012 in ciudad de mexico i was living there in that time and part of the intention to create this piece or this intervention is because we have to take the streets, we have to have it our public spaces and manifest in our public spaces because it's all right. So now um, may, may, maybe many uh, of you know that in Mexico there, have, there has been um, a lot of uh, social movements in the last weeks uh, especially feminist movement in the streets and and I think it's part of this to to create this awareness and people can know and can can uh, can know that we are very tired of the the violence we are living as a women and so this piece it was needed with different kinds of um, fabric with with different kinds with different kinds of colors of yarn um, it was a jar, jar bombing, it's the technique, and Venus uh, symbolized the love and the fertility. So if uh, my intention also was to cover the Venus in these fabrics, in these knittings, uh, to manifest my in, in conformity, in conformidad, I don't know how to say, like, um, yeah, um, against the human trafficking because many of the women that are disappeared in, in Mexico are, they are, many of them are coming from vulnerable communities 
Uh, many of them are coming from rural uh, towns and sometimes they are um, like victims of this kind of people that says to them that they are going to give them job in the US. So they go with these people and then this, uh, they disappear. So many of them are like uh, engañadas. Um, uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that was uh, part of one of my last, like of my first works. Another project that I made that has more, um, uh, like, uh, how can I say, uh, that I, ha I have been working more in this project is the uh, textile cartography or femicide. And this work, this work I started to do with a friend of mine that she's activist and um, academica, like uh, she's teacher. Uh, academic. Academic, uh-huh. And, and researcher. So she starts um, to document the places where the bodies of the women in Ciudad Juarez were found. So I translate into um, textile and digital piece that is made it with textile electronic leds, elect textile electronic textiles, and those uh, leds are. Uh, it's a translation. It's just that the translation of the digital map where the women were found to the textile map with the leds. Um, this one it was starting in. It's a series, and it, it I started in two thousand fourteen. It's an electronic map, and here I make a big. Uh, this is this one. It was just the first one, but then um, we are in a uh, on, ongoing process with a bigger map that is made it with many hands. So every time I have the chance, I make these workshops with people from different parts, like different cities or countries, and we use the platform of Ellas Tiene Nombre. Uh, where we found the statistics and, and the, the um, places where women were found. And I uh, invite the community to install a let in the name of every woman that has been murdered. So each, each let represents the life of each one. And it's also like a gesture of turn on a light for, for one of for each of them that has been murdered. So here you, you can see the, um, some of the workshops and people that are installing the LEDs. And the materials that I am using here are, um, are, are, are electronics. And it, in this case, I'm not creating um, circuits because you can create circuits with these materials or also you can, um, how, um, how do I say? Um, start like programming, like programmation, like because there is a platform that you can program. Like if you can, you can get Wi-Fi or you can um, control something with with this uh, little pad. But in this case, it's very basic. It's just the LED. Okay, so this is one of the most uh, significant process I having, but later I would like to show you what is the work that I have been doing from uh, since 2016 to 2020, that it's exploration of the colors of the earth. And this project, it gives me a lot of hope. In 2016, I meet a um, Norwegian artist, it's called um, Lisby Jorn. And when we meet, she has a project similar uh, with about femicides, uh, but she's documenting the names. So when we meet and we share about the stories, um, I was working in, um, in a gallery in that time, and we decided to start a collaboration in which women could be um, helped by by a project that we 
we didn't know we wanted to, to create, but she told me that I, that she has a um, friend that is a fashion designer and she wants, she always wants to help women. So we start conversations with Tina Malat, that uh, she's a designer that donates a lot of things for this new project that is called Me and More. So at the first time, we wanted to create a secure space for women in where they can get like a well-paid job in order to get empowered, economic empowered, in order to make decisions. Because we, we believe that um, it's a fundamental thing that women has to be empower, economic empower, empowered to go out of situations of violence with their partners. And even if they are economically empowered, sometimes it's very difficult. So uh, we started this project. It's a textile project in which we create garments and the exploration of the colors, it was um, part of, of the, the project. So this is the research, the first research we made. And later we create this association with um, Myanmar is more like um, Myanmar is a it, it's a nonprofit. It's a civil association, and we create a program where the women that are part of this program they learn skills of sewing and botanical colors, and at the same time they have a scholarship. Or I I, I like to to um, say that it's a scholarship but it's, it's, um, it's a well-paid job because they are learning and they are producing garments and they are getting paid. So uh, all of the garments that we produce to this uh, program are sold in a platform, in a digital platform, and all the income that comes from these garments are going back to the women and we're in, in their communities. So part of the idea is that they are pre now we are producing the face mask and are as you see are botanical printed are ecological um there is ilda one of the women that it, she's not oh we work with raramuri people that are indigenous pe people from the chihuahuan state uh and and in this um this diapositiva in this um slide uh, they are in the graduation of the first program of sewing and she, they, she is Candelaria, uh, who is one of the women that has, has been working with us for three years. And now the Raramori community, uh, we help them. We, 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 we um, promote the classes, the program, but also when they are finishing their training, we help them to make their own business. So this year, in March 2020, we uh, helped to the Raramori community to create their own sewing studio. So now they are still producing uh, garments for the and more, but now they are producing garments for other people and they are producing their own garments also in their, in their studio. So part of the, the uh, objectives of me and more is to help the women to get empowered by knowledge, but also we help them to open their own businesses. So in, in some point, if they don't want to still collaborating with Nianmore or be part of the Nianmore Association, they have the skills and they have also their own, their own things. And, and in some point, I, I love this because it is, um, has this uh, socialist background uh, where the means of production are, are, are for the people. So in the maquiladora, uh, the women that are working in maquiladora, as you see in the video, um, they have to work like sometimes even for 12 hours or more, and they are very low paid. So the difference that we have of this, and they are never be um, able 
to be uh, the owners of the machine of the machines that they are using or the means of production. So in this case, we are the opposite of maquiladora. And also another thing that it's very um, good for the people that are in training and are working in EMR is that uh, we have we create our own system of hours. So people are working six hours per day, and um, as we produce the, um, the garments or the, um, the artisanal dresses, uh, we create this um, standard that we, we produce from 30 to 40 garments per month. So we are talking about that we are producing one dress in one day. So in Maquiladora, the difference is that people are producing 800 dresses per week. So uh, we are giving a breath to the people that is in this process because what we really care is that they really learn about how to sew, how to cut, how to make the whole process and to print. And also the printing with the flowers, it's, it's very beautiful. It's a process very, very beautiful. And we use different kinds of materials for that. So here, um, this year we have um, we have been passing like very difficult time uh, because as association we receive uh, foundings like um, grants or donations, but also part of the sales or, or the the sales are coming to to support also the operational cost of everything. Um, so, but this year with the COVID, it was very very hard for us. So we was thinking to close because we, we, we was like almost broke to keep going with the project. But a good friend of us uh, who take these pictures, his name is Manny Jorquera. He is a photographer from El Paso and he make these beautiful pictures, uh, these beautiful photos with the models and everything. Um, he contacted us with Vogue. So Vogue uh, give us a chance to be in a spotlight in one of the articles. And this gives us uh, also the chance to sell the dresses because we was very uh, lacking the, the sales. We was not selling anything. So when this happened, it was in May 27, and I'm looking here, um, we start selling. So if, if it was not because of that, we die as a, so, uh, as a nonprofit. So later we, now we are uh, applying for grants and donations and everything and making campaigns. And it has been hard because one of our main objectives is to empower economically. And how was that we was not doing that because of the COVID. So it, it was a very, um, wow, like a hard challenge this year to, to make it. But finally, I think we're, we are good, we are, we are doing it. And another thing that we do in Ian Moore is uh, protest patches. So this is uh, every, every garment that you buy from Ian Moore, um, people can get a protest patch or people can also um, buy a protest patch, like separate, separate. But what we do, is create different kinds of workshops because as we are um, the founders, we are from different parts of the world. We are doing these workshops in Europe, in Oslo, in, in Berlin and other parts. And here in America, we are doing here and in, I don't remember if I made something in San Diego in the last years, but I made in Guadalajara, Ciudad de Mexico, Ciudad Juarez, in El Paso, in uh, Santa Fe, and Albuquerque. So these uh, workshops, uh, we invite people to embroider. So uh, this, this cross with the flower around, that it symbolizes the justice. The cross symbolizes the justice for the women, and the flower uh, symbolizes the life of the women. So we are creating awareness to this action and also inviting people from different communities to embroider. So they are um, also, we are creating community with these people that are, is participating in these workshops. And 
And also each patch, it's made it by different hands. So it's, it's also a gesture of solidarity. And, um, and it's, it's a very beautiful experience. And, and we have these talks and talk about, um, talk about uh, violence and how could we change the world. <clears throat> Um, this, this was a um, personal project, but also related with the femicides and, and the justice. And I translate also this, um, the Daniel Moore flower to uh, my personal jacket that I found in Tijuana. In, in, I don't remember in which year, I think it was in 2011. But uh, in 2018, I embroidered a big patch in the back. Uh, that symbolize justice and life for the women. And it was part of a uh, beautiful, beautiful exhibition in San Diego City College. Um, and it, it talks about that. So um, now I'm, I'm going to move, I'm going to move more into my personal practice. Um, last year, I made this um, exhibition that it was called Seeds of Democracy, and I was um, taking um, soil from, because here in the border, the wall, it was installed like, I think two years ago, but it was a place that didn't have this wall, and it was um, here where I am in, I'm taking the soil. So my idea, it was to create a sculpture with adobe, that it's a, a very old technique with soil from the limit of United States and Mexico in a place where we don't have a wall. So this was, uh, I think it was like in May, like 20th of May, but one week later, the wall start to con it was start to con construct here in the same area. So now there's a wall, but the but the um, sculpture it was made with the soil with no wall. Um, and in in it's I don't know it's very strange because I was thinking that this wall it was paid by the government, the U.S. government or something like that, but. Um, later, I researched that the wall of this part um, from where I get this soil, it was paid by the neighborhoods there, the neighbors there in, in that area. So um, in some point for me, uh, the seat, um, it symbolized, the seat of democracy for me, it symbolized that there, there has not, uh, no debe de haber una barda ahí, that it, it has not to be a wall. That there, that there shouldn't be a wall there. There should be a wall, yeah, there shouldn't be a wall. And I also create this um, knitting, knitting, yeah, with, uh, with printed with Gobernadora, that it's a plant, endemic plant from, from here, from the area that gives us this beautiful green. And also, um, it, it's for me always done the needing work it means community so it's covered by the community it's protected by that community okay um what another thing okay so um this this is also another of my recent work that is also related with the border and if you see here is the border of united states and mexico and the um, the fabric that looks like uh, yellow with some of the uh, gray sparks are the places. This, this is a this is a project. I'm sorry. This is a project that I've made about the um, species imperial uh, along the Rio Grande. So um, this specific uh, piece talks about the the ocelote. That it's a kind of um, leopardus. That it's in risk. And it's in risk in Mexico, but also it's a desert, um, it's a desertic uh, species. Yeah. And uh, I think it's the North American ocelot in English. Yeah, North American ocelote. It's an ocelote, uh -huh. yeah. And, and all of uh, um, the perim perimeter that you see here in, in yellow is printed with gobernadora, but it's the space 
where the ocelot moves is, is the tracking of the ocelote. So uh, also you can see here that there's some lights and those red lights symbolize that the ocelote is in risk. That's the reason why they are in red. And, and they are uh, placed in very specific places in the map because there it was where the biologist found the, the species. So um, another thing that has this map is a QR code. And it's also because I'm, I'm now I'm fascinating to, to mix the technology, the fabrics and the pre-Hispanic um, techniques of coloring. Um, but in the, in, the, um, in the QR code, if you check it, you can consult the tracking of the ocelotes in this area. And you can see how many species are, how many um, ejemplares, like how many, yeah, ocelotes are in this area, where they were found in the, uh, the last time, uh, where, what, where, um, what are the, um, the haunting of the ocelote. And another reason that I'm very interested in this species and the construction of the wall, it's because they have to move around the border. So if there's a wall, they cannot cross to one side and another. And this is going to decrease their life uh, or um, yeah, it's going to decrease the ocelote's uh, life because they have to hunt. And if they don't are able to cross, it's also not just um, um, affecting the, the human migration, it's also affecting, uh, the, the wall is affecting the species. And it, this one, it was part of the, um, a series of a three maps that talks about different species, but this, this one, it was the ocelote. Um, here also, uh, part of the, the activities I think as an artist is also to be involved in um, different kinds of um, yeah, groups and protests against um, environmental uh, disasters. And now um, I'm very focused also, uh, I'm, I'm very worried about the gender uh, issues, but also I'm very worried about the um, the um, ambient uh, environmental uh, issues because here in the area we have a, a huge problem with the minery project and here is some of the um, uh, protests that I, I've been participating from 2019 in 2020 with different groups and we in the first um, picture I, I went to a protest when um, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, the president from Mexico came and we was asking to not install the mine, the mining minery project. The other one, it was the climate strike and I went with my son because I'm also teaching him about to recycle and to how could we do better things for, for the planet. And the other one is uh, with a friends that I visit in Chihuahua. Uh, they are very focused into save the the mountains because there's many uh, also extractivist activities there that they are like uh, compañías de cementos like company that yeah, are concrete companies uh -huh, extracting like uh, natural sources from the mountains and the bio biodiversity uh, from those areas are getting very affected. So. Uh, one of the, my, my last uh, process is uh, about the mining, the mine, mining project. Now I am using indigo, that is um, a color that comes from a, from a tree. Um, in Mexico, we have, um, we have indigo in Oaxaca. It's one of the places where we can find, and also in Chiapas, but since the earthquake from um, since uh, 2018, I don't, I don't remember when was the Ciudad de Mexico last earthquake that was very hard. The epicenter it was in Oaxaca. So many of the producers of indigo, they lost their production. So now um, it's, uh, it's also a kind of, uh, in here in Mexico, as 
a species that is extinct, almost extinct. But we are printing um, with the indigo. It's not from Mexico, but um, I, I have many respect for this color. And also here, I would like to tell you something about the story. We have here a protected, natural protected area that is the dunes that are a very huge um, land of, of sand. And also here in this area, Samalayuca is the name of the, the place that it's, it's in Juarez. Um, it's also more than 2,000 um, rup pinturas rupestres, like uh, ru um, ancient uh, paintings. It's the correct name, I don't know. Yes. Uh, yes, like ancient uh, paintings. And also I found that there's many, many, many species, species living there that uh, many of the cactus are in risk if the mining comes and install here. You are going to listen my dog. <laughs> okay, uh, so what of, of the things that I'm very worried is that if this mine comes to this place are going to uh, make devastation of the land. So if you see in the picture of, of the bottom, you can see what is the impact in the landscape of the, of the mining in Minería Cielo Abierto, the open sky mining. And this is the project that they want to make here in Samalayuca. But one of the reasons why I am very worried is because the mining, this kind of mining, it used a lot of chemical stuff to get the, um, the minerals. So one of the first things that are going to, to be uh, affected is the water and we are living in the desert. So oh, it's very, it's very um, yeah, uh, it's very worrying. Uh, in, in this map, if you see it, here is the border, you can, you can see uh, in the North USA, Mexico, but this, um, spaces where is the indigo are the bolsons, the different kind of bolsons we have. And all the bolsons of water we have here are shared with our neighbors from El Paso. So if this mine comes that it's in this area, could affect the first uh, uh, bolson that is going to affect is the Samalayuca desert bolson, but then it's everything is connected. So all the, the bolsos around could be um, contaminated. So one of the, the yeah, the, the reasons I am doing this now is because I want to express my inconformidad, in inconformity, unconform, yeah, un, that I'm uncomfortable uh, with this project and, and create awareness with my community in, and with other communities also, that um, it's not uh, good that we permit that the mining project comes to, to here. And, and it's also like a Canadian company that is making this. So what I'm trying to express or say to you is that these things it's happening because there's a racist policies that are coming with this project that they are they know that are going to affect our communities and the people that are living here we are people of color we are um la latinos in in su mayoría um so they are affecting our communities specifically so uh first um returning into into the story that i told you before in uh, about the femicides that the femicides are related with the neoliberal project that comes with the maquiladoras. It's also because they create the conditions for these things to happen and also the cartels of the drugs and many other things because the, many of the, the buyers of the drugs are in, in, in the US. Um, and here is like a very specific point to cross everything, to cross people, to cross drugs, to cross the products that are uh, produced in the maquiladoras and people are getting exploited there. 
so now with the mining project is the same, but now it's not people, is the environmental, is or land, is or water, and it's going to be many species that are going to get lost if this project happens. And it's something that is not going to benefit our community, like economically, because they are going to extract everything. And maybe the, the, the only ones that are going to get um, benefit of this is our corrupted government, and, but not the population that we are living here. So now I'm, I'm making this uh, process of this work. Uh, and I've, if you see, I'm, I'm working with maps. And another thing that I was um, telling uh, Amy is that um, another kind of practice, I think, and we have the total responsibility as an artist that we care about politics is to, to speak up. So um, the last, the last year I met, I met a politician that he, he helped us a lot with the, with the Nian More project, but also I, I, I have been in contact with him and I write him a letter to explain her uh, my worry about the mining project. And in this letter, I express that there are more than 400 species that are going to get lost and this is going to be a disaster, an environmental disaster if they approve, uh, allow, and this uh, um, Canadian company goes in. So in that, in the letter, I'm, I'm copying all the pictures of each species. Um, so he can knows about, uh, he can knows what's the life there in the, in the desert. And, and what I see is that when I sent the letter two days later or three days later that week, uh, he, he speak up against the mining. So I think it's very important that we as a citizens, as a artist, and if we really care things that are happening in our communities, in our cities, and we are uncomfortable with what is happening, we always have the power to write to our politicians and express that we are not um, agreed with some things that is happening. I think it's our responsibility uh, as a, a citizens to make our rights um, um, count. And I invite you to, to do it uh, and participate more in, in, in the protest and in the, um, Las Marchas, March, I don't know how to say in English, like the walks. Marches. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And be, be more active, be more active because in some point, if we cannot create a big change, but maybe we can uh, create a small change in our community. And some, sometimes people ask me like, oh, who could we, how could we make a change? And I, I just told them that you can start with your city, with your neighborhood. Uh, because the the um, the change the change we are doing through art maybe could be a uh, very like small, but when we um, put together all the changings, all the small changings that are happening in our community in the world, we are a big change. So I think it's it's, it's just what what I was wanted to share with you today. And yeah, and, and I would like to, to answer some of the questions that um, you sent me. I'm going to stop sharing the, the screen. Um, and here I have, uh, I have some questions. I would like to, to answer all, but there's a lot. So I, I take some that I, I think could be interesting. Um, here we have the first one that says, is there a specific form part of nature, like the colors or sounds that most inspire, in, inspires you? And I, I would like to answer that I'm fascinated with the cochineal. Cochineal is a plaque that comes from the nopales, the cactus. And it was used since the pre-Hispanic era. 
and it comes from Oaxaca, from Oaxaca. So Oaxaca has the epicenter of the cochineal and you can um, get more than 500 rangers from one, um, from, from, yeah, from one pigment, you can have more than 500 rangers from orange, uh, red, purple, brown, gray, blue. Um, there's many, many kinds. And so I'm very fascinated with that. Um, also, uh, to use the cochineal, it makes me feel very connected, connected with my roots that are indigenous. And about the music that inspires me, um, mu music has always been part of my process of creation, but in the last days I have been listening Cumbia Fronteriza, a, a group of friends that it's called Frontera Bugalú, and they talk about migration and women rights and a lot of things. So um, mo mostly the, the, I don't know how to say, the, the music that I uh -huh, always um, play it's more like polit political and also I have a band that I really like from San Diego that it's called Beside Players and and I really like because they have like political uh, content contenido uh -huh. and the second the second question is uh, you have created a lot of works that are in tribute to the unfortunate deaths of many women when committing about the artist and activist Isabel Cabanillas, you say it was the first time you were embroidering someone you really knew. knew. Uh, how did this personal connection to the victim affect your process and artwork? And, and I would like to tell you that uh, for many years, like more than 25 years, I have been looking at the femicides as a new, as something that is happening in my, in my town um, but unfortunately, this year, uh, a, a, a woman that I, I, I meet, uh, she, she was murdered, she was an activist and artist, and, and one day, it, we was not like close friends, but we meet because the art, the art scene, and one day I was looking my Facebook, and I was looking that the family of her was uh, trying to find her, and, uh, but the, the next day I see in the news that she was murdered. So this is happening, this was happening in the beginning of this year, 2020. And I, it, it, it was a very horrible moment for me. And I, I think for many of us that we are living here and many of us that we met her, um, because it's something that opened the wound and it's something very tired because it's a lot of feelings that we have around these issues. And it's, I, I think it's something that it, it marks the life of the, of the people. And, and for us, it was a very heavy hit, uh, especially for the community of artists and activists. Um, and, and I think it's, yeah, it, it's something that, um, give us uh re give us the the chance to reflect on what we are doing and is when i found that maybe what i am doing is not enough and and, it, and it's not because uh we are trying to create a, a small change in a group of women but we are not saving them of the femicide so this is a, this is something huge more than we can um control. So it's very frustrating as, as an activist as a, and as an artist that we wanted to create a change and, and we are frustrating, uh, very frustrated with these things happening and it's very painful. Um, and another um, question that I have here is in the book article titled, We Are Not a Fashion Brand, um, says this nonprofit is helping women in Juarez through garment production. Do you mention that Neil Moore is not a fashion brand, but it's a brand that makes clothing that is used to create a sense of awareness, fairness, and hope. I was wondering how does the design process go for new clothing using these ideas? 
Also, what are some ways that the sewing studio in Juarez improves the safety conditions compared to the modern NIMS equivalent of sewing machines? Okay, so we are, non we are a nonprofit, so our goal is not to produce garments. We create a program where women are trained and paid since the beginning. They learn sewing techniques and botanical prints. Then when they have all the skills, we help them to open their own studios in order to these women to train the next generation like a chain, chain, um, chain of change. And in the design, all what we have is donated from the machines and fabrics also the patterns we having uh, designed, made it with a designer from Nor Norway, the first designs. And then we work with a designer from Juarez, who has been one of the big themes of the street extreme violence. Uh, we have now a plan of six hours work per day in order to the women don't go late to home and they can spend more time with their friends and family. We offer a safe place for their children where they don't have the way um, to take to people care of them. Um, also this year, we create a shelter for one of the um, women that are working with us uh, who has living, um, suffering domestic violence by her partner. And we produce 30 garments per month, to, from 30 to 40 garments per month. Um, and it, this is the difference be, between the maquiladora. The difference in maquiladora is that one person produced 8,800 per week. Uh, and the last one, uh -huh. the last question is, as someone who advocates, uh, advocates strongly for a cause with their art, have you encountered those who question your motives? Your motives, yeah. Um, have you been a, co a cause accused of self-promoting or abusing a platform? And yes, I, I, I think as, as, an, as an artist, uh, we always receive like crit critics. And yes, at the beginning, a, a group of feminists uh, was very upset that we talk about Niuna Mas because Niuna Mas is part of the cons la consigna, is like a quote that uh, it's very used in the um, in the struggle against uh, femicides or violence against women, uh, so so they 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 was think, talking about that why in our project we use this um, concept uh, because in their vision we was capitalizing with the struggle, uh, and I think uh, they think that because they didn't they really didn't know, to, they didn't understand the project. So we are fighting in different ways for the same cause. So we are not capitalizing because this project do, doesn't have an owner. It's not a business. It's not like, a, it's a brand, but, it, but it's not a business because all the resources that comes from the sales are invested in in the women that are working in the in in the process in the pro, in the products in the programs and it's also invested in the um, in their new um in, in to create the their own businesses so many of the people that are uh having these um crit critics criticism uh, uh they they didn't know that this project is with non, um, it's a nonprofit. This is, yeah, we are not, we are capitalizing in some way because we are selling the products, but nobody is uh, making rich of this thing. It's, there's not a, a, an owner. Um, and, and another thing that I, I think uh, this, uh, the people didn't know is that many of the people, many of the women that are part of the program they, they don't know how to learn, how to um, read and write. So in this uh, program, they have the opportunity to learn something that it's going to be useful for their futures. So in some point, I think uh, many people can accuse others, uh, but with not knowing what is behind. And, and I think that it's all of the questions because we, uh, we we think it's um just for um 
chances to 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 answer. I really would lo love to to answer more questions, but I think also we don't have time, right? Yes, we're getting very close to the end of our session, and I just wanted to so to remind our students that the task um, for this week is, I think, as uh, Jeanette modeled for us, the creation of some kind of piece of writing. So it could be a poem, um, it could be a letter of solidarity, it could be um, a, a brief piece of writing that uh, is for nature in some capacity, since that's a real foundational idea um, in in uh, Jeanette's work. Um, and if you would like to then share that with her for her to circulate in some capacity in this work that she's doing in solidarity um, with uh, struggles um, uh, in her community, um, um, I'm happy to do that. You'll just indicate that to me when you um, submit the the assignment. And if not, um, I think it's still a really great exercise for us to think about our environments, to think about our homes, to think about the impact that we can have at the local level, and also how um, I think we're inter, there's, there's a, a connectivity between our um, struggles as humans and, and that environment that we are um, living in, right? And so to think about, I think um, in this course, we've been thinking about solidarity with humans um, and with, um, you know, the vitality of, of kind of humanity. But I think, uh, thank you, Jeanette, so much for making this invitation for us to also think about non-human living things um, and, and, uh, and that life, the, the value around that life as well. Um, so I think we we are nearing uh, the end of our time. I'd like to just remind everybody that next week at the same time at 530, um, we will have a conversation with Omar Pimienta, who will speak about um, his work. Um, and so you're all invited back and our class, of course, will meet <laughs> at that time. Um, but uh, Janet, I don't know if there's any last um, words or any last thoughts that you'd like to leave us with this evening uh, I, I just I, I'm very I feel very grateful so I just want to say thank you to everyone for your patience and, and to and also for your patience with my English so I, I really would like to speak well and express better but it's what I have and I give you with um, with a lot of love to you and and I wish um, yeah, we, we could still um, connect it. So if someone of you wants to keep going in conversation or collaborations or something, or if you have some like more doubts, you can contact me by email or by my social media. In Instagram, I'm, uh, I'm called it Mustang Jane. So you can uh, keep going with the, con uh, we can connect um, for future, um, conversations or whatever and I really really enjoy and I'm so sorry also for that the technology that it doesn't work at the first but we we improve right we yes. Uh, improvisamos. I, yes I think we I think we we made it through and I think you did a wonderful job um, and we thank you for joining us so um, thank you everybody thank you community thank you students and um, we'll see you all very soon Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. Thank you. That was incredible. Bye.